In this problem, we're presented with a pretty standard projectile motion scenario. I'm on level ground, and I'm launching the projectile at 30 meters per second at an angle of 50 degrees above the horizontal. But what we're trying to find this time is the actual arc length of the trajectory before this thing lands. So we're going to start by finding equations for the x and y coordinate as functions of time. Then we need to find out the landing time, because that determines the length of the curve. And then we need to figure out, well, exactly how do we set up an integral to figure out the arc length of this curve. So starting out with the vertical analysis real quick, I have that the initial y value is 0. The initial y velocity will be 30 sine of 50 degrees. And that comes out to 23.0 meters per second. The acceleration in the y direction is just negative g or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So I can write down an equation of motion for the y coordinate using the standard kinematics formula and plugging in all the values. So y of t is going to be 23.0t, and then half of 9.8 is 4.9, so minus 4.9t squared. Next, I look at the horizontal motion of my projectile, and my initial position was 0. My initial x velocity is given by 30 cosine of 50 degrees. And that comes out to 19.3 meters per second. And then the horizontal motion of a projectile always happens at constant velocity because the acceleration is zero because there are no forces pushing or pulling horizontally. So that simplifies the equation of motion. It's just x naught plus v naught x t. And I arrive at an equation of motion for my x-coordinate. So these are the parametric equations for this parabolic trajectory. Every time you plug in a t, an ordered pair x, y pops out. And that's just tracing the path of this thing from start to finish. I think I'll put the landing time calculation over here. Our initial time for t is 0, but I need to find out what time it is when this thing lands. And that happens when y is equal to 0, so I just plug in 0 for my y value. I can factor a t out of the right hand side of this thing and I get t times 23 minus 4.9 t and I get two solutions and one of them is t equals 0 because the y value is 0 there too and then I get the non-trivial one by setting 23 minus 4.9 t equal to 0 and then I solve for t. When I do that, I get 4.69 seconds for the time. Okay, so now we have a set of parametric equations describing the curve, and we know the starting and finishing values for time. And I have to figure out how am I going to measure this arc length. And so the trick to this is to just draw a little infinitesimal contribution to the arc, and I'm going to call it ds. And then I break ds into x and y parts that are also differential. That's dx and dy. And that's a right triangle, so I apply the Pythagorean theorem, and I get ds equals square root dx squared plus dy squared. But those little differential pieces in the square root can be expressed in terms of my parametric equations. I have dx equals dx dt times dt. That's just x prime of t dt. And dy is equal to dy dt times dt. That's just y prime of t dt. When I make those substitutions into my formula for ds, I'm going to end up with a dt squared on both terms. And I'm going to factor that out, leaving me with a dt. So I'll still have an x prime squared and a y prime squared in the square root and a dt stuck on the outside. Now to get the total arc length of the curve, I just add up all the ds's. So I'm going to integrate from whatever the starting time is to whatever the finishing time is. So all we have to do to wrap up our problem here is differentiate my x and y coordinates. So I get x prime of t is equal to 19.3. y prime of t is 23 minus 9.8t. Again, twice 4.9 is 9.8. And then we plug into the equation for arc length. 
and I have my initial and final time. And this integral could actually be done in symbolic form by using uh, trigonometric substitution. But since we're already using decimal approximations in the problem, there's no reason to do that. So I'm going to use a computer algebra system to numerically approximate it. So here we are in Maxima, and I'm using the quad QAG command to approximate the integral. After that, you'll recognize the expression for our integrand, because that's the square root of all that stuff. And then I'm integrating as t goes from 0 to 4.69, and then I had to put in one more number, and it's, that's just a choice of the algorithm that's going to be used for the numerical approximation. For our purposes, it doesn't matter which algorithm you choose. You can put in any number from 1 to 6 right here, and I chose number 1. Hit Shift Enter. And the first number that pops out is the numerical approximation of our integral. You can see these are highly precise. I'm only going to go to three sig figs, which rounds to 109 meters. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.